fish. The collaboration that exists between this institution and our universities is in the right direction. I think there should be more collaboration between this great facility and institution with our institutions of higher learning. And again, listening to you, it's now much more clearer in my mind what we should be doing with our universities. I know we have been having a discussion on our education sector, and we have um, vocational training centers at the lower level. We have technical training centers at the medium level, and we have universities. And there has been confusion, so to speak, as to who is issuing, um, who is teaching what. You find universities sometimes they are teaching certificate courses or diploma courses. And the same is being done by Tibets. And the same is being done by vocational training centers. I think it's now clear that uh, the argument we've always had that universities should stop issuing certificates and diplomas. They should, in fact, concentrate on issuing PhDs. <laughs> Maybe there they can can then be much more focused on research rather than all these general courses all over the place. So I, I quite agree with you that uh, maybe our universities should focus at the top of the pyramid and allow other institutions to do the diplomas and the certificates and the others. Under this program, we made it possible for there to be a screening facility, which was only available in two centers in Kenya. Now we have screening facilities in every county in Kenya for cancer. That was a first step. We also reformed the NHIF then to be able to take treatment of cancer on board. It wasn't until 2016. Now, as Lillian has confirmed, NHIF, the facilities that are available under our NHIF include treatment of cancer. And therefore, we will continue to restructure the National Hospital Insurance Fund to make health insurance not just accessible, but also affordable. At the moment, Africa scholars currently provide a small 1% of annual academic output in global evidence. We have to progressively increase this contribution to about 10% and ensure that the evidence produced is used to drive the necessary changes in policy and practice that should lead to better outcomes for humanity. A recent survey showed that only 11% of PhD students enrolled in Kenya universities complete their studies. And I'm happy that I'm one of these. <laughs> Consequently, 
Consequently, 89% fail to graduate. We need to address this by investing more, more resources, which must also be focused on training in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics programs, more so for women and girls. I am pleased to know that APHRC has helped provide funding and training support to over 450 African PhD students, many of them in Kenya, and currently employs over 40 full-time PhD researchers on various subjects around health and well-being. I am also encouraged that uh, there is a lot of push for us to make the necessary decisions and take the necessary steps to manage cancer which is becoming an epidemic in our country. Two years ago we had only two centers that you could carry out chemotherapy. Today we have equipped 10 centers around the country. We are in the process of finalizing the equipment of eight new radiotherapy centers around Kenya. So progressively, we will be addressing the concerns of warriors like Lillian and making it that much easier for people to access um, help and to access treatment. Back in 2017, apparently, being that I had to work in a new setup of employment and work had to be done, I did not say much about it because there was work to do. What if we also set up different policies that would even govern how we handle cancer in our workplaces? And at that point, I had to take care of my medical bills. Thank God for NHIF, I was able to get treatment. But guess what? It was not sufficient. And do I say that it's not helping? It's really, really helping. But what if you start a process, a treatment process, which you know very well, <laughs> you're not going to, to get complete treatment? I was happy to learn today, sitting in a forum, that that issue has been, uh, has been raised and is being looked into. My question is one, when? Every day we have data. And I'm saying that cash prices have become like, it's statistics, it's just numbers. We have data that will say, we're going to lose 22,000 Kenyans every year. Ladies and gentlemen, it is not a joke. I'm not sure how many of us have ever visited Kenyatta National Hospital to see what goes on there. Probably even in the general world. But maybe we don't have the data. Or maybe we don't know how to go about it. Or maybe you don't have the courage to do it. It takes so much. It takes a lot. But it also takes a government to help. It takes you and I. We are all in this together, be it in family, be it as friendship. Cancer gave me new friends. Whereas we have oncologists who give up their lives for us, you can see them toiling. You can see them trying to read hard, to understand what they should do so that we, we have life. But do we have consultative forums that probably they can also exchange ideas? They would understand probably what Lillian has done. Guess what? What do I do? I go onto the internet because probably there's nowhere to get information from. I go onto the internet, Perus, and most of us do that. We've set up small groups and we exchange ideas on what I feel worked for me, what I feel worked for somebody else. At times it is wrong. Your Excellency, what if we have? Where a place whereby we can all go, we can focus, and we can be led into understanding what I should do, what we, we have, even something to do with, it with nutrition. This, this is an African dream. In the 90s, governments were sending 
uh, you know, young scholars to go out of the country, to go and get masters, to go and get PhD. And then some of them sat out there and said, how do we take back this knowledge and push and influence what happens in our governments? How do we touch Africa and take it to the next level? Capacity can be localized. It can remain in one place for so long and nobody even knows that capacity exists. But capacity can be invasive in that it can actually have uh, that transformative uh, uh, agenda and affect lives. And I think what we, we wanted to celebrate today is you are coming because we have lacked a voice to amplify this capacity here to the, national, to the African governments, beginning with our own Kenyan government that is within which this organization is domiciled. So we really, really want you to become our champion and help this organization to be able to, um, to take the message to, to many, many other institutions as it is already doing. For this effort to, to, to succeed, it, we must leverage these efforts or this expertise, whether from the universities, whether from civil society, or such warriors like Lillian, or research institution, we must bring them together at the national level, exactly the same way we dealt with HIV AIDS when it became, became an epidemic. And the time is of essence, we must move really quickly.